This is the Netflix reboot of the show, Good Times. I think we need to boycott this one. My name is Brother Legend, and I'm here to raise your consciousness. This show is already problematic for so many reasons. I'm just going to give you three and keep it pushing. The first one is, how you going to have a show talking about black people and the black struggle and black families and it's produced by two members of the Cauliflower Coalition? I've never seen Steph Curry's name in the credits before, but I feel like he's just there as a token. But this is something Seth MacFarlane is known to do. For those of you that don't know, Seth Farland is the creator of Family Guy and The Cleveland Show. You can't find me one show about a white family with all black producers. But somehow, this guy has gotten away with four seasons of making fun of black stereotypes and black trauma. Not to mention, this is the voice actor of the father in the show, which is literally blackface. Aside from the stereotypes of obesity and promiscuous curvy women, the second reason it's problematic is because in the Good Times reboot, Seth MacFarlane once again adultifies a young black boy. The adultification of young black boys is the reason why they get longer sentences and more incarcerated. It's the reason they have a harder time in school and are more likely to be disciplined. But to Seth MacFarlane, this is funny somehow because in Good Times, he's decided to include a drug dealing baby in the show. And I can go into this a lot further, but I'm going to keep it pushing, like I said. The last reason this is problematic is because it's literally the reason John Amos, the dad from the original Good Times, left the show. After three long seasons, John Amos left the show because he didn't like the direction of the character J.J. You know, the one whose catchphrase was dynamite. He felt the show was focusing too much on J.J.'s comedic antics at the expense of other important serious storylines. Additionally, Amos had concerns about the lack of diversity in the writing team and how the scripts portrayed African-American characters. He believed that the white writer's perceptions of black family and black fatherhood did not align with his own experiences, and basically, it wasn't reflective of reality. And so here we are once again with the Good Times reboot with characters that aren't reflective of black reality written by and executive produced by non-black people. If you want part two, I can get into it. Let me know. One love.